And joining us right now is Stuart Varney, host of Varney & Company on Fox Business Network, weekdays at 11 a.m. And, Stuart, you know, I love watching the show because you take very broad, large, macroeconomic principles, and you bring it right home to people's kitchen table. And I'm going to ask you this uh, because I think this story is a perfect microcosm of that. Uh, Burger King. <laughs> Burger King, less than a year ago, got rid of the they, – they, they started these low-cal French fries. Yeah. And it hasn't even made it a year, and the low-cal French fries are now gone. I find this to be a perfect example of the market working and people saying, no, give us what we want. Don't try to force these things on yeah. us. You, you are so right. Abs I think we're all a little tired of, of this good advice that keeps coming at you. And when we actually have the choice of what we want to eat and what we actually like, we express our choice freely, and we're saying, no, we don't think that these satis fries are as good as McDonald's fries. And we don't care if they've got 40% fewer calories. We want what tastes good. Now, I think we all know that if you eat a huge bag of fries every single day, that's not real good for you. We know that. But we're tired of being preached at that we shouldn't do this and we shouldn't do that. And when we've got the freedom to choose, we choose what we want to eat in moderation. Nothing uh, wrong with that. Let the market work. I'll go further, Stuart Let Varney. Those boys who froze their toes off at Valley Forge fighting for our independence, they fought for us to have the right to pick whatever French fries we wanted to eat. And we, I know you're being sarcastic. No, I, 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 I mean, I, that. I'm but, taking it to an extra level. But, I, but uh, seriously, I mean, this is an example of the kind of freedom that we should we shouldn't have to fight for our for our French fries. It should be an expected thing that the market is going to accommodate what. Yes. we Americans want. Let the market decide. Yes. Give me choice. Let, I, it's my money. Let me spend it where and how I see fit. Get off my back. <laughs> All right, so preaching. let the market decide. Many people in the market have decided they aren't going to spend a lot of money right now because retail sales are rather flat. What's up with that? Oh, look, I think you're about to see a turning point in the news cycle. Ooh. You know, in recent months, Foreign affairs, foreign policy, uh, politics, uh, the election, I think that's dominated the news. Quite clearly, that's been dominant. I think you're about to see a slight switch where the economy and money come back into focus. And you've hit the nail right on the head there, Brian. Consumers are not spending, and there are huge implications for that. Just got reports out of Walmart and Macy's. We've got the overall retail sales figures. They're flat. People are not buying, even though this is back-to-school buying. What's season, driving that, do you think? They're not buying. What do you what's think? What's driving it? Yeah. Uh, a lack of wage growth. That's what's going on here. Uh, middle America is being squeezed. Its buying power is down. Flat out, statistically, you can show it, buying power of middle America is down. And that's had a huge impact all across the economy. Don't expect rapid economic growth. Don't expect wage growth. Don't expect consumers to get out there and buy. Don't expect this economy to suddenly start expanding at 4 or 5%. Not going to happen. Uh, I'll, I'll go further. We just got news that Germany, the largest economy in Europe, is contracting. We got news yesterday that Japan is contracting at an annual rate of nearly 7%. That's clearly recession territory. They're not going to help us get out of this funk. And Obama's economic policies are absolutely well, not going to get us out of this funk. A downturn in the economy would be very bad news for this administration at a time when people are going to be going to the polls. It would be disastrous in every sense of the word. Very bad news for President Obama and the Democrats, and very bad news for America's finances. We've got the deficit, which is coming down a little. If we slip to a recession or an absolutely no-growth economy, that deficit goes exploding all over again. And we pretty soon hit 18 then $19 trillion in total debt. And we start spending more than the $7 billion a week that we're now spending on interest payments alone on that debt. Stuart Varney, I wonder, given that, and given, uh, first of all, you, you pivoted from the uh, headlines from international crises that have been dominating uh, the, the news cycle, and now you're saying that we're going to have a downturn in the economy. When you look at the potential presidential candidates for the Republican Party, uh, th this combination of problems overseas and problems with our, uh, you know, with with uh, Russia and Middle East and all those things, in addition to continuing problems with the economy, who do you see on the horizon there that could 
answer to and fill that gap on both sides of the equation? I can think of people on one side or the other, but is there a candidate yet that you see that can sort of speak to the international issues and economic problems? Short answer, no. Yeah. I don't think the star quality has arrived yet to balance out the two positions, foreign policy and domestic economic policy. I don't see that, that, uh, that candidate emerging to the front of the pack at this moment. And I don't want to pick out individual names as who's got the better policy on the economy or foreign affairs. I don't think it's time to do it. I just don't see that one candidate emerging as of now. That, that sort of idea. has the tools, at least, to be yeah. able to come up with it. Yeah. yeah, the trouble with people like me is we're always looking for the next Ronald Reagan. Yeah. You know, I, I go back to the 1980s, and it was Ronald Reagan. He put me, jumped me into the American middle class as a fairly newly arrived immigrant. He put me, uh, he gave me the American dream. And so 30 years later, I'm still looking for that to happen again and reinvigorate America. But I don't see the next Ronald Reagan on the horizon yet. But I'm praying. Believe me, I'm praying. I think we're right down on our knees with you there, Stuart Vardy. <laughs> uh, listen, thanks for joining us as always, and uh, enjoy your August. Thank you, John.